and welcome. In this video, we'll be deploying a static website to Cloudflare. We're going to use GitHub Actions to do that deployment. And we're going to start with just a static website that we have on GitHub. We'll first go over the concepts and try to understand visually what we're trying to achieve by creating a quick diagram. Then we'll jump into the code and look at how to actually implement this in code with GitHub and Cloudflare configurations. So what are we trying to achieve? We just have our GitHub repository here. So maybe we have a local workstation, a laptop where we're developing code in an IDE like Vim, Eclipse or Visual Studio. In this tutorial, we're going to be using Code Server and then we have some source code stored on GitHub for source control management. We want to have the users be able to access that website, but we have just stored code, and so our users can't yet access the website. We'll use GitHub Actions to be able to deploy to Cloudflare, and Cloudflare is going to be where our users actually access the website over the public internet. So Cloudflare is what we're going to use to serve and manage the website. And again, GitHub Actions. We'll be doing the deployment in an automated way to Cloudflare. We're going to do that deployment on every pushed commit. What we want from this process is to be able to do our work in our local workstation and then push it and for the rest of this process to be automated in that way when we push code. It's going to be immediately or almost immediately available to our users without any additional effort or manual work. So we're going to use GitHub Actions for that and we're going to use Cloudflare to host the website. So now that we've quickly reviewed what we're trying to achieve, let's see how to do that in code with an implementation. So I'm in a local workstation now and we're going to use an example application. You can use your own application or you can use this example application by going to the publicly available source code and a link for that is in the description. You can copy that code, you can clone that repository or you can fork that repository to be able to follow along. Now first let's make a change to the website. This is a static website and again the process is based on it being a static website. If you have PHP or other server-side code, this process will not work. Cloudflare Workers is not for that sort of website. We just have HTML, a small amount of JavaScript and a style.css here. If you'd like a simple change, you can change the index.html title, which is what shows up in the browser tab. But we'll go ahead and make a change to the background color in our CSS. Now, when we commit this change and push it, we want there to be an automated update of our Cloudflare website. So first, let's see what our website looks like now before we deploy it. And we'll see that locally. Now, this will depend on your local workstation. But as a cloud workstation here, we're going to start a local development server to see this. You could just open up the index.html on a browser if you're developing locally here. Here you'll see this was the website and when we refresh, we see it again being hosted here in a little darker color and that website's going to draw a graphic here which is interactive and also has links. So that's the website we'll be deploying. We've got our change now, so let's go ahead and commit that change. We don't yet want to push it, but let's commit the change. OK, so we've committed that change and then we push it. We want to automatically deploy the Cloudflare workers as we had designed earlier. We want this part of the process where we automatically deploy. So our users can see what we've changed here. So we need two files for that. First, we need the wrangler.toml file. This is a Cloudflare configuration that tells Cloudflare where you're deploying and to some extent how. Use a simple name here for the website. And I would recommend just using alphanumeric characters. 
you can find the name conversions for Cloudflare workers in their documentation. In this case, I'm going to name the Cloudflare worker Nodematic Labs. If you've never used Webpack or you don't know what it is, don't worry about that just now. Just leave this here, the default bundler, and we're going to set the development mode to true, which means we'll get a development URL when we deploy this website. We'll put in placeholders, but leave them blank for route and zone ID. And specify where our website is with this bucket value, which our website is in site directory here. Finally, we'll specify workers-site as the entry point, so this has everything we need for essentially the Cloudflare configuration. It describes our website that's going to be hosted. Next, we need the GitHub Action Workflow configuration. It's going to be in the GitHub directory. Create it if it doesn't already exist. A workflows directory within that, and a YAML file is going to be where we define that configuration. In this case, I'm calling it Cloudflare Workers Dev.yaml. So we specify a name for the workflow. We specify triggers. So in this case, we talked about for every commit is specified on here on every push to the main branch. When we're pushing commits, it's going to trigger a new run of this workload. It's going to execute. That's also going to happen when we have a pull request on the main branch. Now the job that actually runs this workflow when we talk about executing a workflow, that's essentially running a script, but with some nice plugins that make the configuration easy. So what we have here is a job called deploy. It's going to run on Ubuntu. This is what GitHub will host and run our workflow on for us. And then we have steps to find here. It's really two things. First, we check out the code with this step here. And then we install and use Wrangler, which is the CLI, the command line tool for deploying the Cloudflare workers. So we install it with Node.js. There are other options as well for how to install Wrangler, but we'll use Node.js and NPM install for Wrangler. So that's going to mean two steps. First, this setup Node.js step where we're going to install Node.js 12. Secondly, we're going to install Wrangler with the NPM package manager that comes up there and JS where we set it up like this. So that's going to install Wrangler. And finally, we'll use that Wrangler command that we just installed, that tool that we installed to publish the website. And this is all going to happen automatically in this workflow. The last piece that's important here is these two environment variables. So Cloudflare, our account ID in Cloudflare, API token. Now we don't want to specify those directly in this workflow file because we don't want those secrets to be in plain text in our repository. Now this is especially true if you're using a public repository, but whether it's public or private, the best practice is to use secrets like this. So what this means is we need the API and account token to authenticate against Cloudflare when we deploy so that we can push those artifacts, but we store them in secrets management system that GitHub Actions provides. Now let's look at creating those two secrets. From your repository and GitHub, go to Settings. Then go to Secrets. From here, you click on New Repository Secret and provide a name and value. Now, the name is going to be that CF underscore account underscore ID and the API token one as well. The values are going to be the account ID that you have in Cloudflare and the API token that you created in Cloudflare. If you haven't already set those up, go and do that now, then set up these secrets in GitHub. This is the standard account ID for Cloudflare and this API token needs to have Cloudflare workers access. So you use a Cloudflare documentation if you need to, to create this API token, but really nothing special here. This is a standard API token from Cloudflare that will allow us to authenticate and then deploy to Cloudflare workers. So we have those secrets defined and we're going to use them in the deployment. And we're going to tell Cloudflare what we need with this configuration file. And then GitHub Actions is going to run this workflow when we push. So with everything defined, we have our change committed. 
We're ahead by one commit, so now we can push to GitHub and we can expect to see the automated deployment of Cloudflare. So let's go over to GitHub now and see this commit. First thing we see on this landing page for the repository is this icon here. Now this indicates that our GitHub Actions workflow is in progress. So we can go to details here and see what's happening. And in this case, we've already installed Node.js and NPM, and we are in this deploy step. So we're about 30 seconds or so from being able to deploy that new code, that change we made to the CSS. And if I open this deploy via Cloud Workers and we scroll down, you can see that development URL that it created for us. This is now a publicly accessible website. You can use Cloudflare, DNS and Workers to work routes to be able to add a custom route to this, but this is a nice option that Cloudflare provides for us. So if I click on that, we see the website again. If you want to apply your own custom domain as an additional last step, you can come into your domain to find in Cloudflare. Once you've created that domain in Cloudflare, you go to Workers and add a route like this, which takes any request to nodematic.com and routes it to the worker. This name, Nodematic Labs, it's to match the worker that you specified here. So this says to route all requests here to this worker. And then you need a DNS entry as well. So in this case, Nodematic.com, we're going to use a dummy IP because we're not actually going to have a web server that's serving this reason on Cloudflare workers. We need to make sure this is set to proxy so you can edit to change this. What this will do when Cloudflare is requesting Nodematic.com, it will serve the workers because it matches that route that we set up earlier, instead of using this source origin server here. Make sure that's proxied and there's a dummy IP in here. And then you'll get not only your website on this domain that's provided for you, but also if we go to the custom domain, you can access it from there. So now we've created this system. Every time we commit, we're going to get a deployment to Cloudflare workers, and our users are going to constantly have the latest version of the website. Again, if you'd like to use this application as an example, as you experiment with this deployment and GitHub Actions workflow, you can clone copy fork this repository and use it to deploy to Cloudflare workers. There's a link to the repositories provided in the description of this video.